I wanted to make a documentary about the educational system and how it interacts with neurodivergent people, specifically those with autism. My little brother has autism and my family has always struggled when it comes to um, getting the educational system to teach him how to utilize his full potential. I wanted to document how frustrating it is and I wanted to talk about how that affects my family and how it could potentially be improved. But what exactly is autism? There are three basic symptoms that are observed in all types of autism. Social interaction challenges, deviant responsiveness and difficulty in communication, cognitive dysfunction and insensitivity or oversensitivity to certain stimuli including sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch, tendency to engage in repetitive behaviour throughout life on a daily basis. It may involve pacing, head rocking and hand flipping etc. Autism is known to affect one in every 60 individuals, with boys at five times more risk to be autistic than girls. What causes autism is still unknown. It is believed that a cocktail of genetic, environmental and psychological factors contributes towards autism. Autism is broadly divided into three major types. Classical or Canner's autism, often referred to as severe autism. Asperger's syndrome, also called as high function autism. The third type, also known as pervasive development disorder or atypical autism. It usually involves more sociological and behavioural associated deviations and is a rather less studied type of autism. What was your experience when it came to figuring out education for Matt and in terms of like dealing with an IEP, that sort of thing? It seems like his teachers, the administrators that had the power to make the decisions of where he was going to go have a preconceived notion of what an autistic child should be doing. You know, the IEP process is supposed to be like a team. You know, it's supposed to be the parent and the teachers and the and you know some general education teachers and then the administrators. He was in middle school, mm -hmm. and I put it out there that I wanted him to go to college. <laughs> And they looked at me like I was just a blithering idiot because they're like, clearly, you are out of touch with who your son is. Instead of them saying, well, let's look at how that can happen. They have a track of what they want kids to learn. Um, a program that allows them to check all the boxes. It's not necessarily a program that helps the kid to succeed in a general track of the norm of society, you know, finish your education, go to school, get a nice job, make money, live, you know, how you want to live. What I'm finding out, <coughs> and what we find out through the IEP uh, meetings, is that, you know, their expectation is, okay, so the kid has to be in some kind of educational program until he's 22. So let's just check the boxes. Let's just say, okay, so he's in class. Even if what he learned today was the color blue. So they'll have a conversation about the color blue. Well, what do you think about color blue? How do you like it? Is it darker or is it lighter? What else is blue? Is the sky blue? Is the car blue? Name some things that are blue. And so you're sitting there going, are you, is this really a lesson? So it's frustrating um, when you go through the IEP meetings and you're trying to, you know, compare your expectations to to what other people's expectations are for your child. And, you know, you have very little relevance in what the educational outcome is going to be with your child unless you pull your kid out and decide to homeschool them or even go to a, a you know, a paid for school. You know. When you're in an IEP, the public school system is responsible for you until you're 22. It's understood that the kids aren't going to go to college. The solution is for the parents to then choose which grade levels that they would want their student to repeat. Not because a student failed that grade level, but instead to take up the time so that they aren't in high school for eight years. In my brother's case, my mother didn't want him to be forced to repeat a grade understandably so but as a result 
he's in high school. Right now he's in his junior year, but it doesn't matter because there's still five years left. And the Special Education Services IEP document found within the Georgia Department of Education website, it describes transition services beginning at ninth grade and established in their IEP where they would receive vocational training and appropriate transition assessments related to training, education, employment, and independent living skills. To be clear, this is not at all like neurotypical high school. Well, our classes we call it an access class um, because we give them access to the standards. You know, so for the world history, you know, we covered World War II and we explored that topic and we give them access to that information with biology. You know, so they'll get exposure to photosynthesis and um, the human body and different things that have to do with biology. Um, and, you know, we do different assignments and different projects or um, different vocabulary that we get to explore and just give them more knowledge and exposure to. So we do go over the information again from each unit. Um, but, you know, we want to, we want to give them exposure to, to the topics and stuff, but it's not our only focus. You know, our, our only, fo our only focus is not just to, you know, do they know what different parts of the brain do as much as like, we want to mix that in with real life things and vocational skills and um, life skills and independence in life. So we want to make sure that we cover a mixture of those things, you know, so we might not go as in depth with it. What all goes into the vocational living skills? So for vocational, those are our work skills. So we do practice in the classroom with like filling out job applications or we can do different work tasks in the classroom that kind of work on those skills, but we also go out twice a week. So last year before the pandemic, we went to like Partners Pizza. They would, um, a lot of times we did the cleaning and the setup and prep for them to open that morning. Um, we also went to the Bloom Closet where we um, just organized clothes and we sorted things and we hung things up and um, did whatever tasks they needed. So in each workplace, we were able just to do different types of work skills. So we try to do things in the classroom as well as in, um, in the real environment is right. always the, the hands-on experience is always so important. Right. Um, and then as far as the daily living, you know, we, we try to give them access to the, we have a washer and dryer that we can practice with. We have, you know, dishwasher and a kitchen. We practice cooking and um, cleaning up and um, just some different daily living skills that they would need to be more independent at home as well. We have ways of measuring people's intelligence that um, are disproportionate, whether that's by gender or race or class or, you know, intellectual, you know, kind of typicality or not. I would say that these students don't tend to, you know, score high on SATs if they even take them. But the other side of that is these students have been included in the classroom you know, with neurotypical students. And when I grew up, that wasn't the case. But they had, you know, special ed classrooms where students like this were kind of shunted aside and it was exclusive education. It was separate and not equal. I would say that they're, these students and the students that they're in the class with who are matriculating, right, and neurotypical, that's just natural, that's been built in from kindergarten through 12th grade. So there's a natural kind of connection there and bridge to college. And, and a lot of these programs were created because that bridge to higher ed was not uh, there. And, and, and where a number of students went from high school to college to the workforce, these students went from high school to the workforce but without that additional um, education and, and training and skill set building and kind of maturation that you do in college. We rebuilt that bridge, right? And so did the other post-secondary inclusive um, programs around the country. And we felt it's so important that um, everybody have the opportunity to come to college 
if that makes sense, because the statistics show that all students, all, all young people who come to college tend to have step into careers at a higher level. They tend to make more money. They tend to be more successful down the road. I'm not saying that they're necessarily wrong in the way that they're going about teaching these kids. I'm just saying that it's not a good fit for my brother. And if that's the case for Matthew, then how many other kids and how many other families are dealing with these same frustrations? We have to promote change and be more inclusive with the way these kids are being taught instead of it just being cut and dry and neurotypical or neurodivergent. There's so much that we can achieve from learning from each other, from accepting people's differences. Neurodivergent kids can learn how to be more social from learning from t neurotypical kids. And neurotypical kids can learn how to perceive the world in different ways from neurodivergent kids. There can be more acceptance. The neurodivergency can help to be normalized instead of it being something that we have to constantly spread awareness about. Instead of it just being something that, you know, people don't talk about, people don't think about. If we aren't open to changing the educational system, then many of these kids whose only fault is neurodivergency will continue to slip through the cracks and not reach their full potential within the educational system. The majority of what I see about autism you know, on YouTube is various families just like mine trying to jump through all these hoops so that they can get a good education for their kid. And that's not right. The educational system was made so that people can have a solid foundation from which to grow, from which to succeed. If it's not doing that, then it's just wasting time.